All right, so what I'm gonna cover today is the blinking lights on the uh, differential controller for the Active Track, the Super Select, and the Super Select 2 that you'll see on a lot of the Monteros, uh, Passarios, and stuff like that. This specifically is a 2005 uh, Mitsubishi Montero Limited in the uh, USA. So a lot of people, there's a lot of confusion around it. It's a great system. Uh, and it's really not that complicated, it just seems complicated from the outside. Once you kind of got an understanding of it, it's actually pretty simple and you can get around uh, any of the issues that are involved with it, and most of which are just easy fixes. It's a pretty durable system, uh, but a lot of people get stuck on it. And then uh, they'll, ask for they'll, ask, they'll ask questions about it on, on a lot of the, uh, the groups and the forums and stuff like that. And uh, in return, you just get a lot of random replies of all this different stuff that may or may not fix your truck. So if you have having blinking lights on the dash, honestly, the first step is to go ahead and just pull the codes. I mean, it's, no, it's step one. Like any mechanic, dealership, whatever, they're going to pull the codes. So what you need to do, if you have a blinking light at all, you need to go ahead and just pull the code. And... Uh, you can't just pull it with uh, OBD reader. So OBD reader will pull the engine codes, but it won't pull the differential codes. Fortunately, pulling the differential codes is actually easier than pulling the OBD codes for the, for the motor. So in order to do that, it's, it's rather simple. It takes a few seconds. I'm going to go into it. Uh, what you're doing is you're going to go down to the OBD connector with either a wire or a uh, paper clip you know whatever whatever works for you whatever you have on hand and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna ground pin one on the OBD connector all right uh, you can stick the wire in pin one and then m take the other end and put it to any ground uh, the key switch ring uh, for example works uh, or if you really just want to make it real easy you basically just ground pin 1 to pin 4. Pin 4 is a chassis ground on the OBD connector, which is down here, the black plug. Uh, so in order to find pin 1, I, I've been doing this so, so long that I know where all the pins are at. But what it is is one end is narrower than the other end. And you got the wide end. So... On these trucks, the wide end, if you look really, really close, there's a 1 and an 8 on the wide end. It's showing you pin through 1 through 8, but I'll tell you right now that on the Monteros and, and stuff, the pin 1 is going to be closest to the driver. So it's going to be pin 1 right here, and pin 4 is literally the fourth pin over. You can kind of tell because if you look in there, uh, which I doubt I can get on the camera, uh, there's actually pins in there not just empty spot pin 8 is an empty spot so if you're on the wide side of the plug and there's no pin in there then you're probably at pin 8 so what you want to do is pin 1 and pin 4 and you can do it with a paper clip or you can just put a wire in there so give me a second and I'll do it so pin 4 something that won't damage the pins Little bit more difficult with the uh, camera in my hand but in pin one all right so that's it preferably doing that with the key not in the truck so what's going to happen is you, you all you do is you pin those up put the key in the ignition turn to accessory you don't have to start it the lights came on and now they're blinking and what it's going to do is it's going to blink you the code that your truck currently has. It's going to have some long beeps like it is now. Then it's going to have some short beeps. One, two, three, for example. All right. So we can wait and it'll blink the next code. So that was one, two, three, one. Well, that was four. Let's see. So that was 41. One, two, 
three, one, two, three. So that was 33. So I have code 33. One, two, three, four, 41. And it's probably gonna, and it's gonna repeat again, and this should be 33 again. So currently this truck has code 33 and code 41. All right, there's a, there's a wonderful chart you can get online. I'll put a link in the uh, description for the chart. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know what code 41 is. It's probably something I uh, triggered uh, in messing with the truck uh, in order to get a code for this video. But uh, 33, for example, is a, is a common one. 33 is the transfer position switches, uh, which is there's five switches on the actual differential case, uh, which they are prone to go bad on occasion. Usually it's one of them. A lot of people will change all five. So that's all you do to get your codes. And that's step one. And once you got the codes, you can kind of tell. A lot of people will say, oh yeah, just change the uh, solenoids, change this, change that, do this, uh, mess with the actuator. The thing is, is if you have the code, you know exactly what you need to be looking at. You're not changing solenoids that don't need to be replaced and wasting money and time and getting frustrated because you changed the solenoids and now it didn't fix your truck. So there are 21 codes uh, that can come up on this. Uh, of the 21, there's four of them specifically that are more common. Uh, the big ones are 32, which is the transfer position switch. Uh, that's typically gonna be problems with the actual actuator on the differential, uh, or on the differential case. Uh, or the transfer case, I'm sorry. So that actuator, sometimes it'll get corrosion in it. There's a couple of kits you can get to change a couple of parts out. It's not very common, but it's more common than some of the other codes. Uh, but at least you know that you're messing with the actuator. It could be a wiring, could be the actual actuator itself. Uh, the actuator's rather important to this system. It's not something you can get away with. You got That one you gotta have to fix. Uh, the other code, which is on this truck at the moment, is 33, which is a transfer position switch. Uh, and the, like I was saying, there's five switches. Some, two of them are normally closed, I do believe, and two of them are normal, or three of them are normally open. They they switch they, they switch and swap around. Uh, you really need a diagram, which I'll try to link as well, uh, to show you which switches are supposed to be open, which ones are closed, because it doesn't really make sense because sometimes they're open sometimes they're closed it's kind of a weird situation but once you got an idea you can kind of figure out which switch it is uh, and determine which one you need to replace if not replace all five of them which most people do they're a real pain in the real pain in the butt to actually swap out you have to drop the transfer case down to access all of them but you can access the plugs for all of them and in this case uh, on this truck I need to replace one of mine which is why I got code 33 uh, but it hasn't actually affected the driving of my truck because I can I know how to bypass it so I understand the system and I literally just ground out that one after it because it's the actuators and everything still work just the switch isn't working so I still have every option it just takes me a tiny bit of tiny bit more effort to get it to work until I can get time to go ahead and change it out that way I can still go off-road and I can still do everything I need to do or if I'm out on it if you're out on the trail and you have an idea what's going on you can just put it back into two wheel or whatever you need to do get it in the four wheel if you if you get stuck somewhere or whatnot it's it's rather easy to go ahead and just bypass those and uh, not actually cause any problems but you, you really I mean you gotta have a have, a, have an understanding all right so the next one that's a real common one is 34, uh, which is the freewheel engagement solenoid valve. That's the one a lot of people will talk about, the solenoids, the solenoids. It's, it's either going to be a vacuum leak or the actual solenoids, they do tend to go bad. I mean, after about 20 years of those solenoids setting toward the front of the truck, uh, it, it happens. Or it could just be you've ripped a, you, you have low vacuum on one of the lines. Uh, you, you got a leak somewhere. That's a real big common one. It's real easy to lose a vacuum line if you've been going off-road or something happens or if you're down there working on something. 
So 34 is when you need to start looking, you need to start listening to all those people talking about solenoids and vacuum leaks and all of that. Uh, and then 35. 35 is the other one that's going to be your free will engage switch, uh, which is going to be also related to vacuum after the solenoids, uh, or it's going to be the actual actuate the the front actuator uh, arm is uh, corroded. It's one of those things that if you haven't used your four-wheel drive in a long time, uh, it can get corroded. Uh, it can have stuff built up on it. It just hasn't been done. It hasn't just been actuated in so long that it's taken a while to get into position. Uh, stuff like that. And that's actually really easy. And that one usually causes the two front lights to blink green when you have issues with the, uh, with the free wheel engagement. Uh, 34 and 35 both will uh, start blinking the front lights for you because those are both your front uh, differential uh, controls. So <clears throat> other issues, let's say you have blinking lights and you've been working on your truck and now all of a sudden you have blinking lights. Things to keep in the note, uh, low voltage. If you have low voltage, you're gonna, you might start tripping uh, some codes. Uh, for this system. Fixing that, I mean, you, have, you lost the ground, battery went dead, uh, battery is low right now, uh, you had to jump your truck and now all of a sudden your lights are on, the, 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 these differential lights are blinking at you. Uh, low voltage will cause that. Uh, usually that'll clear up uh, if you unplug the battery or uh, hell, even restarting the truck sometimes will get those to clear up on their own. Um, another one is the accelerator switch, the gas pedal switch. The accelerator switch is linked into the uh, differential control system. Uh, if that switch is unplugged or damaged or not working, that switch will cause you to have issues. Uh, the, the speed sensors, the ABS sensors, the front and the rear, that it's dependent both fronts, both rears. Uh, if any of those speed sensors are malfunctioning, not working correctly, you should get some check engine lights for the regular OBD2 as well for that but they will cause issues with the differential controls and active track and all of that. Uh, the brake pedal switch is also uh, part of it. I'm not 100% sure if disconnect, what, what disconnecting the brake switch has to do with it, but it is part of it. There are codes for it and it does tie into the system. Uh, and also the shift lever switch. There's actually a switch in here. So if you've been in here messing around, doing all, you know, uh, all up in here or something happened or you know, spilled something down there for instance there is a switch under here for this lever if that switch is disconnected or damaged it will cause issues which I mean it makes sense this is the, sh the shifter for it it's not it, it may still be working but there's a switch in there that actually ties into the system so that's another one that's going to uh, cause you issues if you've been working in here uh, so I'll show you a couple of things also to look at for this. I'll show you where the solenoids are. I'll show you the free will engagement sensor, and I may even jump up underneath the uh, truck for the transfer case and show you where the plugs and everything are. Although off the top of my head, I don't know which ones are what. I'd have to prepare a little bit better for that. So, I cut this off. It's also preferred not to drive around with your OBD tech connector plugged up it's gonna start blinking lights at you while you're driving and trying to reset and doing all types of stuff so wouldn't do that so when you're talking about code 32 and uh, 33 which is the transfer position switch uh, the actuator and the sensors and all of that most of that is your your two blinking lights from the front and that is going to be some of this stuff here and a lot of this stuff you can fix without even buying parts other than the solenoids themselves. Forgive me, I've been it's been bad weather, so I've been out and there's mud everywhere. So these are the two solenoids uh, that get replaced. Uh, these are the big ones, they control everything. Mine are covered in mud. Uh, mine have never went bad. Uh, but these are the ones that usually cause issues. They can go bad. They're right here, they get covered in mud, they 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 they're more in the elements than some other stuff is. So those are the two. Uh, you can test them. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to determine whether they're bad. But usually I would wait till last to replace these because there's a couple other things you can look at first.
So some of the big stuff. So here's your front uh, transfer case uh, and all of that. So this is the freewheel engagement switch. So it's just an open closed switch and it, it grounds. If you go to test it, it grounds and tells you whether it's engaged or not engaged. A big thing to look for on this, and you always want to check, is if you look up here, this plug right here, this is the plug for it. This plug will, is right underneath the oil filter. All right, it's underneath the oil filter. It gets corroded. It gets really disgusting. Mine actually, that was one of my big problems. Is this plug was so corroded that it wasn't working anymore. And all I did was pull the plug apart, clean everything up, which it's a lot cleaner than it used to be. It used to be completely black. You couldn't see any of this, uh, and plug it back up, and it started working again. Uh, it's a really simple thing and very, very common. It's actually probably the most common thing you can have, rather than everybody else say vacuum solenoids and all that. But this plug just being dirty is a common thing. Just clean it up and put it back together and see if it fixes your issue. So here's your actuator. This is a boot. This arm goes, there's an arm behind here. I kind of don't want to pull it off, but uh, there's an arm behind here and it goes in and out based on a vacuum diaphragm, which is two lines. Uh, vacuum on one side pushes it in, vacuum on the other side pulls it out. So it's rather easy. So big thing is this will get corroded in, on behind here. So you can actually take this cover off and try to force it, move it around, lube it up, clean it up, uh, and all of that, and get this thing actuating again. And like I said, here's the two vacuum lines, and this specifically is your vacuum canister. Sometimes this will get a hole in it. If this gets a hole in it, you'll start having issues with this front section here. So a big thing to check is to make sure you don't have any vacuum leaks. It may sound complicated. A big one you can actually do, it's really easy is off the top of my head, I don't know which one of these is supposed to be open and closed. But what you can do is you can literally, with the this truck's been running, you can actually pull the line off and you can hear air coming out. All right, so this had air on it, okay? So this actually, this vacuum canister was actually holding air and my solenoids were working. Uh, if you pull this one, obviously, this is the one that was probably not, it's not gonna have air in it, but what you can do is you can get up there with the truck running. Uh, mine is actually in four-wheel drive right now, so this was probably engaging it. Uh, you can take the line that has air while the truck's running. It's going to throw some codes when you do it, but take the line that's actually got air on it and put it on both sides and actually forcibly actuate it by hand with the air and make sure this is this this diaphragm is working and this actuator is working. You can just, if this one was the one that had air, I can just put it on that side. It'll pop it out, put it back on here, it'll pop it in, and you just keep going back and forth putting that one. You don't have to have the other line hooked up at the time. Just take it and swap it back and forth and actuate it. And if you see it's binding up or problems or anything like that, uh, that kind of gives you an idea that you need to clean this up. So it's really easy, it takes two seconds, boom, 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 knock it around, make sure this is actuating like it's supposed to, and you, and you have all of this. Uh, testing this sensor is another good way. You can you literally check to see if it's grounded, swap the line, and then check again to make sure it's not grounded. Uh, so, I mean, it's really easy to test this, it's really easy to test all of this. Uh, also, if this vacuum canister had been leaking, there wouldn't have been air in either of these lines. If the solenoids weren't working correctly, uh, they could have been stuck in one position and not the other. But you can you can test these lines and make sure they actually have vacuum on them like they're supposed to. That's going to tell you it's going to that way you can test those solenoids and you can test that you have vacuum in the system. If you pull these lines off and there's no vacuum after the car after the truck's been running, uh, then obviously something's not. You're either leaking or the solenoid's not open to let vacuum in here. All right. So if all else fails and you can't get vacuum down there and you're having issues and all that, then you want to start looking into testing these and figuring these out, making sure they're actually actuating like they sh like they should. Uh, going back and forth on the truck, you can actually probably put your hand on them and kind of feel them clicking. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you can. Uh, but testing these would be next and then possibly replacing them. Uh, they're really simple. You can buy the ones exactly for the truck. You actually, which they're not expensive, so you might as well buy the ones for the truck. But any of the two port actuators are really will work if you're in a bind. Uh, 
and that's basically most of your freewheel engagement stuff on the front of the truck. Uh, then when you start talking about uh, code 34, um, I'm sorry, not code 34, 32 and 33, your transfer position switch, your actuator, and all your position switches, you're going to be under here. Which give me a moment, I'll climb under here. You're going to be under here at the transfer case. So here's your transfer case, obviously. All right. And I have some jerry rig stuff right here, which is part of my whole bypass thing. So here are your switches, your actuator. Okay. So making sure all of this stuff, a lot of corrosion and stuff on these will cause these not to work. And, this, and even though the sensor is still working. Uh, but the, these are your switches these are the plugs for your switches you can't really get to the switches themselves without dropping the transfer case uh, let's see so you'll look I actually have this is a bypass wire uh, I'm in four wheel drive right now so this is unplugged if I want to go to two wheel drive I actually just have to hit the left it takes two people unless I run the wire outside the truck but I hit the lever, this particular switch right here is the one that's causing me issues and is bad. Uh, so all I have to do is go to two-wheel drive, plug this up when it's shifted into it, and it kicks on. So the actuator and everything works, it's just the switch saying that it's in position when it really is. Uh, let's see. So you have these three here, then you have the other two, which I doubt you can see on the camera, are up there. And that is all five of them. The sensors themselves are on top of the transfer case. They're, I don't know of any way to get to them without dropping the transfer case. Uh, but if you, and that's why most people, when they drop it, they go ahead and just replace all five sensors. And, uh, yeah, and then your actuator, a lot of people have taken this apart. Uh, some kits to replace some of the components and clean it up and put it back in. Uh, it's very unlikely that the actuator goes bad, but it can. And it, it can get corroded just like anything else. It's actually a pretty decent design, uh, but they, you can't have some problems with it. Mind you, there are some vacuum lines here as well. Uh, which also can cause you issue. This one vacuum line runs all the way around. So if you have a vacuum issue for the actuator, that can cause you some problems as well. Although forcing vacuum in or on this here uh, doesn't actually actuate it at all. It's a mechanical actuation. I did test with that. Couldn't get anything from doing that itself. And that's most of what I'm going to cover today. It's the basics. I'll probably go make another video and go in more in depth on those uh, switches for the transfer case uh, at another point. But really, the big thing to, to know here is step one is to pull the code. If you pull the code, you can determine uh, where you need to be looking, whether you're in the front of the truck, whether you're underneath the transfer case, whether you're looking at vacuum, whether you're looking at switches, uh, anything like that. So... Just remember, if you have the blinking lights at any point, uh, step one, pull that pull that code. It's it's not hard. It takes two seconds. A piece of wire, a paper clip, you climb under there, and you got it. So, and that's it. And I'll, I'll wrap the video up with with a couple other little tidbits. If you if you get this is uh, we're in four high right now. Uh, if I go to too low, it'll actually error out because I need that my one sensor is bad on this one. But there you have too high low uh, center. If you get to the point where you let's say I want to go four low low uh, four low lock center, if you do it, you'll start getting this beeping. All right, you're like, what the fuck? It's beeping at me. If you read the sticker that comes with it, which mine's up here, if you read the sticker, it actually says you need to be in neutral for this. A lot of people forget you it's been so long since you've done it put the truck in neutral 
and then put it in four low. It'll blink a couple times and it locks in. So a lot of people will forget that you need to do that. You shouldn't be driving around with the with it beeping like that. Uh, that if you're not engaged at that point. So the four low lock center is the one is is really the only one you need to be in neutral for. But being in neutral for all of them doesn't hurt anything. And you should have some quick actuation like that. Sometimes if they're blinking or it's taking them a while, uh, you may need to move the truck a little bit. Uh, if if the pin if if it can't actually engage like it's supposed to because of the position of where the wheels are you know where where the drive shafts are and stuff like that it can happen moving the truck forward and backwards a little bit uh, should kick them in if you're getting really slow actuation uh, you probably have you probably need to work the system a little bit more uh, so all right so I'm gonna close with that and uh, if you have any questions uh, hit me up. I'll probably be posting this video on a bunch of the groups and stuff like that and uh, I'm always available for uh, helping diagnostics and uh, any troubleshooting questions. Alright, have a good one.